on tiptoes. Alexa, pick a number from 1 to 20. It's 12 tiptoes. Here we go, Solid Jen. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Smurf walk time, Alexa. A number from 1 to 20. It's eight smart blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're dancing. Alexa, a number from one to 20. It's 20. One, a two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And finally, we're going to Tweety Bird, Alexa, a number from one to twenty. It's five Tweety Birds. One, two, three. A three, a four, and five. Nice warm up. Chapter 6, it's called Pigtails. Hi, Leslie, said Paul. Hi, Paul, said Leslie. They were friends now. Paul hadn't pulled either of her pigtails for a long time. Paul sat in the desk behind Leslie. Once a long time ago, he had pulled Leslie's pigtail. It felt great. That is, Paul thought it felt great. Leslie didn't think it felt too good. But that was earlier in the year when Paul was younger and immature. Now he knew better. Still, her two long brown pigtails hung in front of her face all day, every day. The bell rang for recess. Leslie and Paul, can I talk to you for a second? Leslie said, Paul, can I talk to you for a second? Sure, Paul, said Leslie. They were alone in the room. All the other kids had rushed down the stairs. Mrs. Jules had run to the teacher's lounge. I've been good, right? asked Paul. I haven't pulled one of your pigtails in a long time, have I? So what do you want, a medal, asked Leslie. Paul chuckled. No, well, can I ask you something? Sure, said Paul. Sure, said Leslie. Paul took a breath. May I pull just one of your pigtails, he asked. Please. No, said Leslie. Please, Paul begged. I won't pull it hard. No one will know. Please, please. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. Please. You're sick, exclaimed Leslie. Paul lowered his head. I'm sorry, he said. You're right. I don't know what came over me. I won't ask again. Good, said Leslie. She shook her head in disgust. 
Paul watched her pigtails waggle. Can I just touch one, he asked. I won't even pull it, I promise. No! What's wrong with just touching one, Paul asked. Yuck! You're gross, said Leslie as she turned and marched out of the room. As Paul watched her go, that her pigtail seemed to wave goodbye to him. He slapped himself in the face with both of his hands. What's wrong with me, he wondered. He walked to the side of the room and leaned over the counter. He stuck his head out the window to get some fresh air. Down below, he could see the kids playing on the playground. They looked like tiny toys. Leslie stepped back in the classroom. I'm getting my hair trimmed tomorrow, she announced. If you want, I'll save the pieces for you. It'll just be some split ends. Paul was so excited he forgot where he was. He quickly raised his head and bashed it against the window frame that he bounced forward and toppled out of the window. Leslie stared in horror as the open window then rushed toward it. She leaned over the counter and looked down. Help, gasped Paul. There was one brick on the side of the building that stuck out a little farther. Paul desperately held onto it with both hands. I'll go get Leslie. I'll go get Lewis, said Leslie. He'll save you. No, don't go, cried Paul. I can't hold on. My fingers are slipping. Leslie reached down for him. Try to grab my hand, she said. Paul made a grab for it, but missed. Then quickly clutched the brick. I can't help. I'm scared. Just don't look down, said Leslie. As she tried to stay calm, she pulled her head back in through the window. What are you go where are you going? cried Paul. Help! Don't leave me. Leslie looked around Mrs. Jewel's room for a rope or an extension cord or something for Paul to grab, but she couldn't find anything. She returned to her the window, sighed, then leaned out backward. Her hands tightly held on the edge of the counter as she looked up at the sky. Grab my pigtail, she said. A big smile came across Paul's face. Really? he asked. Just do it, said Leslie. The pigtails hung above the, a foot above Paul's head. He let go of the brick with his right hand and grabbed her right pigtail. Yeah, Leslie yelped. He grabbed her left pigtail with his left. Yeah, she screamed. Okay, pull me in, said Paul. His legs dangled beneath him. Leslie's eyes watered in pain as she tried to step away from the window. I can't, she groaned. You're too heavy. Paul swung his leg up against the side of the building. Try now. Leslie groaned and took a small step away from the window as Paul took a small step up the wall. Then they each took another small step. At last, Paul managed to get one foot on top of the brick that jutted out. Leslie pulled her head inside the window as she took another step. Paul let go of one big tail and grabbed the windowsill. Leslie took another step, pulling Paul the rest of the way through. They both collapsed on the floor. Tired and sore. Oh, my head hurts, said Leslie. Wow, you saved my life, said Paul. Well, don't worry. Someday I'll save yours. You don't have to, said Leslie. Just don't pull my pigtails anymore. I won't, said Paul. Suddenly he laughed. What's so funny, asked Leslie. This time, your pigtails pulled me. Boys and girls, I was so worried what was going to happen to Paul. That was crazy. Our steps are... Tune in tomorrow. We're going to learn about freedom. So, uh, why'd the boy throw a clock out the window? He wanted to see time fly. You get it? The clock, he wanted to see if the time could fly. It's a funny joke. Don't you get it? It's game time. And today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing a special game outside that involves rolling. Yesterday, we worked on playing a skee-ball game. If you missed our skee-ball game, make sure you go back and watch yesterday's video. It was so much fun. Today we're going to be playing a game called bocce. Now the way you play the game, it's actually pretty simple. It's basically lawn bowling, uh, but it's started out by using what's called a polino or a jack. You toss this out past the center line of the course, and it needs to go at least past the middle line. 
Then you take an actual bocce ball, and the bocce ball is tossed out using a number of different throws. You can use a punto, where the ball is th thrown to try to hit the polino, or you can use a volley, where the ball is shot up in the air. Now, the idea is to get that bocce ball as close to the polino as possible. This is how we're going to play. Now, bocce is usually played with two players. I'm going to show you how to play by myself. First, I'm going to take our tape ball, and I get to throw the ball anywhere I want. So put by my ear, point, step, and throw anywhere I want. Now, my challenge is to take the ball, and I'm going to try to roll it and get it as close to that tape ball as I can. Ball by the outside of my knee, step, bend, and roll. And it rolled and stopped right there. I'm not sure if you can see. And now if I was playing with somebody else, it would be somebody else's turn to roll their ball and see if they could get it closer than me. If they get it closer than me, they score a point. If I'm closer, then I score a point. I'm going to go see how, how far away Mr. Fallon rolls. I was pretty close. That was one and a half feet away. Now, I would take, now whoever wins that one gets to take the tape ball and throw it, and you get to try to roll it toward it again. I'm going to try to roll it and see if I can get even closer this time. Ball by the outside of my knee, step, bend, and roll. Oh no, that one's farther away. Mr. Fallon's going to go measure it. Alright, that time I was five and a half away. So now I'm going to take our tape ball. I'm going to throw it someplace else. I'm going to throw it over there. Ball by my ear, point, step, and throw. Way over there. Now Mr. Fallon's going to try to roll it and get it as close as I can. Ball by the outside of my knee. Step, bend, and roll. Oh. Alright, Mr. Fallon's going to go see. I was five and a quarter feet away. Let's try one more time. All right, I'm going to try to beat it. So far, I had one and a half in my first one. That was pretty good. We'll see if I can beat it one more time. Ball by the outside of my knee. Step, bend, and roll. Oh, I'm not sure. away that time. Boys and girls, this game's called bocce. Play it with somebody at your house. So much fun. If you don't have somebody to play with, play it by yourself. I was having fun. I'm going to keep trying to see if I can roll and hit the tape ball. It's going to take a lot of practice. I'm going to have to get really good, but I bet I can do it if I keep practicing. So much fun. Boys and girls, boys and girls, that was fun. I had so much fun today. Thanks for joining me in Good Morning Muscles. Tomorrow on Friday, we are going to have even more fun. We're going to have a special bowling golf game for you tomorrow. So much fun, I can't wait. Uh, we're also going to have a ton of other things, including a special shout box warm-up tomorrow. And we're going to be swimming. It's going to be fun. I'll see you tomorrow. Muscle!